A story can really surprise you. When I first saw the title of this manga, I was immediately skeptical, but then I saw so many great reviews online from fellow queer people who really adored it. But the title, I married my best friend to shut my parents up, just made me kind of wary. There was something about it that didn't sit right with me, a bunch of scenarios and assumptions about the manga that started going through my head, and none of them are really true. It's a really, really surprisingly wholesome, friendly, kind, sweet, and satisfying story that's told in just a few chapters. It is a single volume manga that you can read in half an hour and get a really, really satisfying ending, a really wholesome experience, and you'll probably just go back to the beginning and start it all over again. It's a really cozy little afternoon read that I can imagine returning to whenever I want to smile. Our protagonist is Machi, a woman who's probably in her 20s, very career focused. She's been inspired by her parents to pursue a specific career path and tick off certain boxes as she goes through life. She works at a random office for a random company in Japan, and her parents are now hounding her, now that she's got a good job and a stable career path, they're hounding her to get married and have children and keep ticking off those boxes. It's a story that immediately reminded me a lot of my favorite feminist Japanese literature. Things like Sayaka Murata's Convenience Store Woman and even Earthlings, which deals with similar themes but in a very, very different way and also Miyako Kawakami's Breasts and Eggs and All the Lovers in the Night. These authors are dealing with similar themes of rigid life systems and ladders that we're all supposed to climb in terms of our professional, social, romantic, and personal lives. These are all themes that this manga is also exploring, but in a far more explicitly queer and wholesome way. Machi lives with her friend, Hana. I don't want to say best friend, they have a senpai-kohai relationship, where Hana was her underclassman, and she still refers to Machi as senpai, and the two of them live together. Hana works from home. She sits at home all day and works as a graphic illustrator, and she's really good at it. Machi goes off to the office, and she does her work, and she comes home, and Hana is really, really sweet and loving and doting. But that's because Hana is gay, and she's always had a bit of a crush on Machi ever since they were in school together. But Machi is straight, right? She's going to eventually meet a guy, have kids, get married, do that whole thing. But she just keeps not wanting to do that. She keeps finding excuses or reasons to avoid that, despite the fact that her parents are breathing down her neck and calling her and hounding her and telling her what she should be doing, what the right thing to do in life is. And so, very, very early on, because this is a very, very short manga, Hana turns to her and says, why don't we pretend to be married? That would shut your parents up. And at first I thought, well, surely her parents aren't going to be happy with her being in a gay marriage. And that's the point. At first I thought, is this supposed to shut her parents up because they'll be happy that she's now married? No, it shuts her parents up because they are conservative and homophobic and furious. So they go along with this plan. They follow through with it. They move to Shibuya where you can legally get same-sex married. They do it. They go visit Machi's parents, and they announce that they are now married, and Machi's parents tell them to get out. So it starts on a pretty low note that a lot of queer people can relate to, being disowned or worse by their parents. For the marriage to work, they have to continue to live together, despite the fact that Hannah was only living with Machi because her apartment was getting fixed up, or she has to find a new place, I can't quite remember. But they continue to live together, and things start to change. Machi starts to change. There's some gratuity here, there's some what you might call fan service, with Hannah being a little too sexually aggressive at times and teasing Machi by doing things like trying to get into the bath with her or physically tease her, and some of it makes you feel a little weird. And then the wholesomeness kind of takes over from there. Now the mangaka herself, Kodama Naoko, is presumably a queer artist because all of the manga that she's created has been Yuri lesbian manga. And so we can assume what we're getting here is a fair representation from a member of the queer community. What's interesting about the manga 
is the way in which Machi very subtly and slowly changes. And in fact, the change within her is so nicely and satisfyingly gradual that it makes the manga seem longer than it is. Machi changes so gradually. And yet, as I said, you can read this in like half an hour. She begins to realize that she isn't only satisfied with the life that she's suddenly fallen into, but she's in fact craving it. When she goes to work, she is looking forward to going home to her wife and she realizes that she's looking forward to spending time with her wife, to eating with her wife, to doing all of the things that a happy couple does. And of course, she has to compare that to the fact that she could have had this with a man pretty much at any point, and she was being encouraged to, but she never did. Why is that? Why is she now so happy in the situation that she has avoided all of her life, and the only difference is the fact that the situation involves another woman. And so bells start to ring. And this is something that is so important as a moment in a lot of queer lives. When we look at habits that we formed, we look at ways that we've been thinking or behaving or the friendships that we've built, the people that we've surrounded ourselves by, and we have to learn to realize things about ourselves based on our circumstances. And it takes a lot of introspection. For example, I've written fiction for the last 10 years. None of it published. But whenever I write a new story, my protagonist is almost always a woman, and that woman is almost always a lesbian. Because I am non-binary, and I am attached to femininity, and I always like to explore femininity through my stories. And realizing the characters that I'm drawn to writing about and the stories and narratives I like to write, they reflect my internal gender identity. And this is true for so many people. You might realize that you're gay or bi or asexual or transgender based on the people that you are surrounded by, the culture and social groups that you choose to be a part of. And that's pretty much what happens here with Machi. She realizes that she's gay because she lives with her gay best friend who has a crush on her. She is okay with getting married to her. She's okay with upsetting her parents. She's okay with breaking the status quo because it's all been there all along. And what at first worried me was that this was going to feel forced, but it doesn't because so many of us need a trigger to awaken something in us that we didn't know. So many people realize their gender or sexual identity very early on in life, maybe when they're a teenager or even younger. But so many of us, and I come across people like this all the time, myself included, realize things in our 20s and 30s, and that's exactly what narrative is being told here. And so I felt very represented by this manga, and I'm sure a lot of people have as well. I married my best friend to shut my parents up is a silly name, but it encapsulates what happens in that spark, in that moment that then lights a fire that is the rest of the story. What a terrible metaphor. I'm keeping it in. That's what she does. She marries her best friend to shut her parents up. And it's what happens from there, what that makes her realize that is so beautiful. I also want to briefly mention just how gorgeous the art in this manga is. It's kind of evocative of 90s style manga with big, big eyes and girls with bangs. <laughs> <laughs> that seemed like a very popular thing. There's a lot of focus on faces. A lot of panels are just big, wide faces, big expressive eyes. I love that. It feels very 90s. It's very evocative of the manga and anime that I grew up on as a kid. And it's just gorgeous because the artist obviously has a flair for writing and drawing female characters, romantic female characters, specifically with a very cute and dynamic expressive nature. There's a lot of love poured into the expressions of these characters, and that helps you feel that wholesomeness even more. I Married My Best Friend to Shut My Parents Up is an absolutely delightful Yuri manga, and if you want to read something that is queer and wholesome and loving and kind and sweet and very empathetic to a lot of our narratives and a lot of our personal stories, and something that's so short that you can just read and then it's done, this is perfect for you. A perfect Yuri manga that I absolutely adored and I will just pick up whenever I fancy reading something for half an hour that will make me smile. Loved it. Subscribe for books.